All right, let's get started then. Um, so welcome to this FOSMO webinar uh, on uh, iGaming and personalization. So um, my name is Steffo Hallon and I'm hosting this session today. Uh, and with me, um, I've got Matt Buff from virtually here uh, from our UK office. So Matt, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hi Teppo, uh, thanks for that. I'm uh, Matt Buff, I work in our London office and uh, specialise within the, the gambling industry uh, within sales. Thanks Matt. So the, so the agenda today for the, um, this webinar um, is basically uh, really about talking about personalization in the iGaming industry. So we're we'll be touching first some of the of the current challenges now in 2019-2020 that uh, iGaming operators are facing and then we're we're going to dive into some of the areas around conversion optimization, driving engagement and cross sell um, and uh, the use of AI and machine learning um, which are kind of core for the personalization um, in this area and we'll um, have the chat here open um, on the tool as well as you can submit questions on the on the tool as well so we'll get to the q a then towards the end of the of the webinar so um matt let's get started so if we if we first go into the into the challenges and uh, and opportunities so um so what what do you think are the kind of the most uh recurring in terms of uh, issues that operators having to deal with today and what, what sort of personalization in this area present. Yeah, thanks Stepo. Um, so I guess you and I were in Malta a couple of weeks ago uh, for Sigma. We were chatting to lots of different operators out there of different sizes and uh, operating lots of different markets and there was sort of a consistent uh, trend of free uh, feedback and that was over um, just the, consistent with how mature the market is and how saturated it is and regulation coming in that's going to impact that more um, driving up acquisition again so we have the example in Italy um, this year where uh, regulations uh, in marketing uh, have come in and uh, an operator that we spoke to had their acquisition um, fall by about 70 percent so it's really becoming uh, much more prevalent and uh, traffic's becoming more fine out for those operators so it's really about utilizing uh, the customers that you have uh, and their time on your, your service. And again, we've got Spain uh, looking like it's moving the, the same way next year. So that was a, a sort of uh, a constant theme around, around the show and, and talking about how um, operators want to or need to stand out in that very crowded space. And uh, again, regulation came up around Sweden uh, and the inability to differentiate your service due to promotional and bonus restrictions. So it really sort of came back to how do we differentiate the service and operators spoke about uh, difficulties with the content that they have with uh, many operators having the same sort of content, the same payments, uh, the same games, um, working with the same providers. So that really left uh, a last area where we can gain differentiation in the market and gain competitive advantage. And that, that's really an opportunity around personalization and providing uh, great UX. So operators sort of see a chance to, to gain this brand expression through that. And I think the opportunity there exists and that we spoke about with the, the operators is just leveraging and uh, using as much data as they have on their service at the moment, which is, is uh, a, a huge volumes of player insight and player data. And it's really about understanding that data uh, and uh, using it in real time to optimize uh, the UI, which we can come on to uh, throughout this discussion. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's exactly also what I picked up. So, so really, I guess the, the theme around leveraging the customer base and making the most out of the acquisition investment, um, and then then this data point that you mentioned, they, they do generate a lot of information and a lot of analytics is being run. But I guess what I feel is that there's there's still this uh, inability to take action based on that data and in real time within the service. And, uh, and at the same time, the, some of the marketing, um, email marketing and things like that are, are sort of a little bit diminishing in, in the impact. So, um, so that's, I guess, a good takeaway to, to jump into the sort of the first uh, point here around the 
conversion optimization. So, um, so Matt, um, yeah, sure. I mean, just to start off with a stat on conversion um, around personalization, and that has shown that 50 uh, non personalization of content can cause bounce rates of up to 50%. So, quite significant um, impacts there. And with the problems, as we talked about with acquiring traffic earlier, it's really important to um, optimize and personalize the content that's shown. So, how we at Frosmo look at the gambling industry is we split conversion into two uh, distinct. Um, groups, so that's visitor to reg, and then registration to first time deposit. And we look at those two distinct groups quite differently, and the use cases and methodologies that can be applied to move users through both parts of those flows. Um, so I think that the registration to first time deposit operates struggle around 50% is a blended average, um, with 50% uh, drop off from registration to deposit. And it's really about using optimization to, to create percentage gains. Um, so how we can look at doing that is, is looking at the amount of data that's available within a, a user's first touch point on your service. So that's pre-sign up, pre-login. Um, when they first landed on, on your service, we know what traffic source they've been derived from, uh, the geo, the device, the time of the day. There's a huge amount of data that's uh, available to us. We're able then to look at uh, utilizing that data with full base learning. So what customers like this one that's been acquired from this source generally go on to click and play and how they how they convert and we're able to then to bring content forward that's relevant for that individual user uh, to optimize their user flow uh, based on uh, this pool based learning uh, within the front end yeah so um, so I guess this sort of part of experimentation is, is also something that is uh, that is useful um, when it comes to A-B testing and things like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I guess a, 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 more, a more distinct journey here would be if you had ad copy or display advertising live uh, for a specific campaign uh, and you would want that copy or user journey to, to be consistent and run through onto, onto your site. So um, it's about presenting um, the right copy and also um, based on this pre-sign up data and being able to test different copy on the site and different journeys uh, accordingly. Um, so just, just to go into that, when we look at the, uh, the, the ad copy that a customer would land on and what you display, um, we also know what type of games that customer would go on to play. So we can, within that user journey, insert really relevant um, games upon a first login that that player would then go on to play on the service. And that really moves the operator away from being a one size fits all uh, classified collection of games on the site and it's instead very relevant uh, not only in terms of the copy and the advertising uh, message that uh, it's shown but in terms of the games that are shown as a first step for them uh, once they've moved through the process yeah yeah i think the point of realization of this that i i've, I've gotten with these things is that i think uh, not only in iGaming also in retail a lot of the conversion processes are somehow designed as very linear that you, you land on this page and then you go on to the next page and, and things like that but then when we look at the behavior of people actually so they they do tend to leave uh, behind a lot of breadcrumbs about their activity what they what they do prior to starting to convert and, and I guess the, the the cool thing about that and personalization is that we can take all of that information and then start to learn across the pools of users mm what sort of uh, incentives or what sort of promotion, what sort of uh, content is most impactful for different sub-segments, all, all of that data that people leave behind. So, um, so yeah, so I guess that conversion uh, optimization piece, so, so that's really to, to drive uh, the, the percentage up from people landing to the site to the registration and then further on from there to, to the first uh, deposit and the first game played uh, seg um, segment of that that user journey. So then, if if we take it Matt, to the to the next area, so this uh, driving engagement. So can you can you explain a little bit what what, what we mean with this engagement uh, in the iGaming? Yeah, so I, I guess engagement is looking at how often your customers are coming back to your site, how loyal they are, and how how much content indeed and uh, they're engaging with on your site and how long they're staying in your service. And I think that, again, a, a 
con consistent uh, thread of feedback from gambling operators is really um, the question, how much content do you have? And it's a, a significant volume of content in terms of games or markets. Uh, and then when you ask the, the follow-up question is how much of that content is engaged with, seen and played, um, it's actually a really uh, low split, I mean, a nine to 10 uh, split in a lot of instances. And that uh, really sort of, it, it's a shame in, in terms of the amount of investment that go, often goes into to getting that huge library of content and also in terms of um, what the potential that your users have to play and what they're actually being able to, to see and discover on your service. So I think product discovery um, through engagement and recommendations uh, provides a really good opportunity to differentiate the service. And I think when we assess or look at um, who your competitors are, um, and instead of looking at the traditional other gambling operators, uh, if you look at who your customers also spend their online time with, uh, the answer is invariably a Netflix or an Amazon or uh, a Spotify. And they're spending time on those sites uh, to discover new content. And that's the main USP of those products. They uh, understand what you want to see, what you would like to see next. Uh, and that uh, way of content discovery um, allows you to, to, to interact with more, more content and, and uh, build more brand loyalty. And I think that sort of uh, emphasis on the uh, UX uh, has brought down customers' sort of attention span now. And I think gambling operators sort of need to step up and, and try to differentiate their service in that way. And I think operators who are doing this well are seeing better loyalty, better return rates, customers um, into spending longer and interacting with the service. And uh, we had an instance of uh, an operator, a uh, casino operator, moving live with some um, AI-driven recommendations. Uh, and they saw a 17% increase in the amount of games that were played on that service. Uh, so some quite uh, significant uplifts available uh, when uh, that's brought in. Yeah, yeah and I think it, it, it's, it's really, if I, if I think about myself also as a consumer, a player and a content consumer, so, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't spend as much time on Netflix YouTube unless uh, unless I was recommended after that my trigger on that. and I, I guess when it comes to this AI based recommendations it's not only about which content should be offered to whom but it's also the sensitivity the stage in the in the journey points at the time where you're gravitating towards things that you're used to what you like. And then there's a time where uh, you're you're willing to discover new stuff, and then personalization we can we can sort of be sensitive to those things. And then there's the time when you're bored, where you need that extra touch to uh, not exit the service but do a little bit more. So so I guess on the on the still on the KPI around the engagement, so it's, it's really the sort of time spent on site that pretty much directly correlates then to the. To the, to the deposit volumes and number of games played. So those those KPIs go hand in right, hand in hand here, right? But yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's it's it has a big halo effect on a number of KPIs uh, when you get uh, customers more engaged and loyal um, to the service. Um, and I think that point that you made over uh, understanding when a player is most likely to want to engage with new content and, and uh, using um, an intelligent sort of engine to, to power that understanding um, is really the way forward. And recommendations can be incredibly flexible in the logic that's implied. Um, so it's again, not a one size fits all uh, solution. Um, we can look at um, if you have a player playing a highly volatile slot for a long period of time, for example, it may be worth looking at factor, factoring in uh, games with a higher RTP within your recommendations um, so that that player has a, has a chance of success with the next game that they play on. So there are different logics that you can try and I think it comes back to this point in uh, the conversion piece that we talked about. Everybody's uh, customer base is different or traffic sources uh, are different. So a different approach will work with different customer groups and it's all about testing uh, and A-B testing, different recommendation logics uh, different conversion optimization pieces uh, to see what will perform best uh, for your customer group and and then learning and continuously improving the service based upon that. Yeah, true. As well as I guess combining and uh, 
um, when, when some, of, some of the operators that I, I, I speak with, some of them are very driven to drive what they want the players to do, whereas some other operators are more um, wanting to sort of offer what might be interesting. And I, th I think the power comes really from being able to combine the best of both well, so you, you can have a certain amount of determinism there, uh, power then by AI, logic and the pool based learning, the crowdsourcing of data. All right, good. Hey, Matt, let's, let's move to the, to the third uh, area where we can drive impact. So, um, so the cross-sell uh, opportunity. So I guess we end up talking to, to different types of um, iGaming operators. Some are running a sports book, some are running a casino, some are running both. So I guess the cross-sell is for the, for the dual plays. Um, yeah, I, absolutely. And even wider as well, if we look at uh, operators with multiple products like Bingo and Lotto, um, and this opportunity has always existed uh, within gaming to, to acquire traffic at slightly lower cost and then uh, obviously convert that traffic into higher yielding products. It's uh, well known as well that uh, customers who move between different products on a service will become more loyal and become more valuable. Um, so there's this challenge uh, that uh, operators keep coming back to us with, and you mentioned it earlier during this session, Seppo, and that's really around traditional CRM methods um, becoming uh, more difficult. Marketing automation is um, due to regulations, uh, it's, it's, it's becoming more ineffective and diminishing response rates as a result. So the best time actually to target your customer is when they're in your service um, in real time. Um, with a message to convert onto to another product. So it's really about looking at the best ways to do that. Uh, and again, I think it comes back to this um, learning from your data and the pool-based learning that we, we talked about and all of the breadcrumbs of data that is available in your service. So um, we can start to, some, some sort of practical examples of this is starting to learn um, which type of customers are engaging uh, on your sports products, for example. Uh, and when the optimal time for them uh, to convert and play a casino game is. So whether that's in between a bet, um, it's in between a game or an in-play game, we can start to learn when the best time to, to insert casino content. So well, we recently um, had an operator uh, start to replace their static casino banner content with dynamic uh, personalized recommendations uh, for that we inserted within the sports lobby um, showing promoting casino and that had uh, a four and a half percent increase in click throughs uh, that customers uh, had seen uh, the dynamic content over the static content and of those a higher intent to purchase in the casino with a 13 percent uh, going on than to spend in the casino so there's that ability uh, to make the site uh, move it moved the site away from almost like a classified uh, adverts uh, so approach and really move it to a more personalized and, and dynamic um, uh, in, in appearance with relevant content being shown um, and again within a mobile uh, user experience we started to insert casino games at an optimal time learning from what type of customer it is searching on the the site and uh, when they're most likely to convert and start inserting those casino games uh, within uh, the sports uh, menus when they're scrolling through the mobile display and that had uh, a really uh, strong um, result. So yeah, re re really it's about uh, data, continuous improvement and flexibility of where and when to deploy content. Yeah. yeah, I think what's interesting, you, you mentioned the mobile. So we've been, we've been talking about a lot, of, a lot about this sort of theme of 72 square inches and 10 seconds of uh, attention. So there's, uh, there's only a limited amount of screen real estate where you basically need to engage with your customer and, and studies are showing that 10 seconds is the time that you have with them and then the span is over. So I guess that, that issue is even amplified in the mobile experience where you have even less space and a more sort of uh, fast moving um, user um, sort of behavior pattern. So, so really making that space and time count with something that is relevant and not annoying or distracting uh, is the key. And then I just want to touch on the other, other thing that, that we, we, we've got up here, the sort of the in-service promotion, in-service marketing. I guess that's a wider theme than just iGaming, but, uh, but something that everybody who's doing consumer uh, online services or consumer SaaS or even business-to-business -business SaaS 
is looking at really because the like you said diminishing returns on email marketing so um so you think that time effectively that you have the person on the service is key because that that's where you can do stuff with him that's where you can promote stuff to him the chances of getting heard via email uh is, is less although still a, a powerful uh, sort of uh, tool to, to market after the session but, but this in session marketing and in session promotion i think is the key theme not only for cross sell but the other other scenarios as well okay yeah uh, great um uh, we've got a another section to come on to so uh if we look at ai i think uh Tepo, you've um, done quite a bit of work with AI and have a computer science background and degree, so perhaps you're best to, to tackle this one. Yeah, yeah, I think we, I, I personally, and I think Frostmo now over the, over the years, done quite a lot of work on, around this um, AI and machine learning. And it, it, it sort of seems like that iGaming is, uh, is a very sort of good industry to, to apply this. Um, and um, we talk about a couple of the, the areas where where AI can can really make an impact. It's um, I think it's something that we, we talk under the theme of uh, automating the merchandising, automating the promotion. So so really taking taking all of that breadcrumb trail of data from all the users, correlating that, finding with the use of machine learning and AI, finding the sort of the common common lookalike audiences and persons and uh, leveraging that data for automated decision making of which products to promote, which content to promote, which campaigns to promote, what is having the highest chance of success with this particular um, individual. So I guess on the simplest level, that could be just something like automating A-B testing using this sort of multi-banded uh, multi -banded algorithms by having the computer learn which variations are working better for different segments and driving more of more of the promotion and it goes to the goes to the product recommendations that can be this YouTube Netflix type algorithms where, where we're finding that which uh, which people are interested in the common uh, themes and then applying that insight and learning um, across the, the different things. I'm seeing something degraded audio quality. Matt, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. Cool. And, and then I think, I guess on the highest level of sophistication is really to, to apply the um, sort of extensive machine learning modeling on predicting certain per, kind of behavioral patterns or, or trying to identify that who, who might be a person is uh, likely to, to churn or go ahead and become a VIP or uh, try and predict uh, what is the most likely next deposit value to, to be able to start optimizing those kind of things. So, so I, I guess to summarize still the, the AI and machine learning. So, um, I mean, first of all, we've, we've, we've got that stuff built into the product and, uh, and it's really powerful for um, making really that process of figuring out what should be given to, to which person and it's a, it's a very fast way of getting away from this uh, one size fits all um, user experience or, or service experience and start building that differentiation and, and friendly helpful uh, user experience into the service that people um, seem to appreciate across the industries. So um, I think with that um, we've covered the sort of the main topic here. So shall we shall we take a look at the questions? Yeah, here? just uh, flick into to these here, Tepo. So uh, one question, the first one that's popped up uh, is how uh, hard is this to accomplish? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a that's a good one. So how how hard how how much effort I guess. If I try to respond to that, how much effort is there to 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 get going these kind of things? So yeah, we, we get that a lot, and and people people typically think that there's a big integration project and a big uh, big effort to put people in. In 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 fact, I mean, getting started, starting to get some use cases out, out into the service, uh, which can happen in weeks. Um, so uh, I think integrating the technology as it works in the front end 
uh, it's, it's very straightforward. It takes like five minutes to, to integrate our script and then getting the first recommendations out, getting the AI powered promotion out. Um, if we're talking about a couple of days. So, so in, in some days, we've got the, the, the technical stuff done. And then in a couple of weeks' time, we've built up enough data so that there's some intelligence behind it. So, so it can start to get going real quick. Great, great. Thanks, Tapo. And uh, I think we've got time for one one more here. Um, so how does Frosmo integrate with our CRM? Um, yeah, okay, yeah, it comes up a lot as well. So um, so I said, so we, the technology is, is built so that we integrate basically into the front end. So any any service where, where there's a web front end, we can, we can work with that. And uh, a lot of the time, we don't actually do any backend integration at all. So we basically, as far as data goes, we most of the time can operate just based on the data that is available to us in the front end. And the users are giving us the uh, the, the, the data and, uh, and, and the breadcrumbs we're learning from the users in the front end and uh, don't need to integrate into the back end. There, there are different levels of integration that we, we sometimes go into. So sometimes we can be just fast data from the back end through the front end in hidden variables or things like that. Sometimes we uh, feed uh, back um, data enrichment to, to the customer CRM, or sometimes we feed uh, the, the customer data uh, to the back end. But, uh, but as I said, most of the time, these are not necessary in order to put in, for instance, AI-based recommendations into the service. Uh, I've got time for one more quick question. Yeah, let's let's take another one. Okay, great. So, uh, question coming in here: Is the content handled within your UI or in our current uh, CMS? Yeah. So, a, a little bit same same answer as um, as to the previous one. So, um, so yeah. So, Frostflow basically handles data um, in pretty much in the front end. So we, we store information to the browser local storage. We can synchronize that towards the back end, and then we can enrich the, the level of information that we have available in the front end while we are personalizing by data coming from the uh, customer's back end systems, either through a back end to back end integration or by the customer's back end system placing some of that information in a format that is available us while we're executing in real time in the in the user's browser, so um, I guess I hope that makes sense. So um, so we typically don't store any any information that is sort of let's say GDPR wise um, sensitive, so first party identifying information, and then but but sometimes we go to use cases that go beyond that basic level. Okay, great. Doesn't, doesn't seem like that there are any more questions here. So, um, so shall we start to wrap up this session? So it was a short uh, sort of intro level session only. And um, we'd uh, obviously be glad to take uh, any conversation always from here to, to, to start to explain this uh, in more detail or do a demonstration of how the product works in real life. Um, so I guess you could always reach Matt at map.buff at fosmo.com. And um, we've been putting some assets onto our website. So at fosmo.com, you can you can um, discover some of these things like the iGaming um, business case calculator. And there are some case studies as well there. But like I said, so me and, and Matt, so I'm Teppo Halonen, teppo.halonen at fosmo.com. And then Matt, obviously, as our practice lead, Always happy to take conversations and explain this in a in a more detailed level, but um, but I think that pretty much concludes what we what we wanted to deliver uh, today here. Matt, are there any final remarks that you want to give here? No, just thank you for everybody's time and uh, hope to follow up with you uh, offline. Exactly. All right. Good. Thank you for this and uh, hope to hear from back back from you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.